you're walking along the street or you're at a party or else you're alone and then you suddenly dig you're looking at someone's eyes you suddenly realize that this could be the start of something big you're lunching at 21 and watching your diet declining a charlotte ruse accepting a fig when out of the clear blue sky it's suddenly guy and guy and this could be the start of something big it is the start of something big is it not how'd you like that how, did you ever think in a million years you get singing we sing we sing you know and honestly this one found out 15 minutes before we started that we were doing this he comes downstairs he's like what the hell is this i'm like we're gonna do like a little introduction right this is something starting something big and as dina martin would say hey pallies everyone have their sippy poos <laughs> this is grape juice so <laughs> you better be grape juice because otherwise <laughs> forget about getting spirit later on no spirit tonight that is true i'll be the drunk medium so hey everybody hello, hello this, is, this is our first everyone. sunday night and um you know what i get to be on this side okay yeah. it just you know we always do it this way and it just feels weird being on that side so this is our first sunday night 7 p.m you know i i was like what do i put the title in it's just too nuts but then i just thought you know sunday would steal it how was that that's, that's right good, right that's right and i hope you guys liked the song and you know i love the title of that too right this could be the start of something big. It is. This is the start of something big. It, it is. And we are so excited that you decided to join us here tonight. Yes. For some what? Food, spirit, and and anything. Laugh, laugh, laugh laughter. Yeah. A lot of laughter. Crazy. <laughs> but you know what? I think I think before we get into like you telling everybody what you are making. Um, I love the music, right? What you're making, I think it's just should be just like a little rap session to see how everyone's doing. Hey, Michelle and Denise. Uh, hello, guys from Aruba. Denise hello. is in Aruba. Hey. I love it, Denise. It's so cool. Uh, a what? A rap? Yeah. I don't rap. Huh? What do you mean by that? You never watch Zoom? Like, you know, when no. you were a kid? No. Come on and Zoom, 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 my Zoom. Oh, God. I can't believe he's never watched Zoom. No, so. I haven't. Um, everybody coming on hello this is going to be a great great night rapping just like chatting like what's oh. what's going on first of all let me just say is there any people out there that are fans of sister wives because tonight i cannot wait mary's got a secret i'm just saying mary's got a secret and i want to know what the hell the secret is that whole family is falling apart sisters sister wives. you know honestly so <laughs> i as soon as i walk into any room and those shows are on i turn around and go out and do whatever sometimes something else sometimes he hangs out and sometimes because things. it's just they're so crazy like why why did you watch that that crazy because you, you know what because you you get roped in and then you just have to see you know it's like and a, then he he it's talks like, like they're, they're the friends like he knows them all right so listen switching so yeah so listen i do i what my big fat fabulous life uh, welcome to Plathville. I watch them all. I have to. I just, I do. I just see what's going on, see how people are different, even though they're reality shows. Um, but I do like Sister Wives. Years ago, there was My Five Wives, which I really liked, and that for some reason got canceled. So, um, but how is everybody? We I'm, just, we I'm had good. an I'm amazing good. wedding. Yes. So, uh, shout out to Anna, Louisa, and Kevin. Uh, we, first of all, we don't do weddings often you know very seldom do we accept an invitation for a wedding and uh, Anna has been very special to me so I knew that I needed to say yes and we did and we had a great time it was a fabulous wedding it was, it was a fun wedding it was I, I it was it, it not your normal boring anything no, right? it really no, was it was, it was, really it was awesome. in Fairhaven Mass it was right on the water it was really, really nice. It was, it was a beautiful time. Yeah. Great people. The table we sat with was fantastic. All right. So kudos to, is it Victor? Victor. Um, Alyssa. I think. Alyssa. I think. Manny. Yeah. Uh, uh, Martin. Martin. I think Courtney. Courtney. <laughs> uh, ja, 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 
you know, Puerto Rican and the Dominican next to me, um, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So thank you, Anna, and congratulations to you and Kevin on you, this you know what, what, you, wedding. You want to know the coolest thing? When we were done and leaving, um, there was a couple there that were just so, so nice, both from Puerto Rico. And when we said goodbye and we hugged them, we, talk, we all talked about our lives. We talked about we just hit 30 years in April together. And um, uh, Victor, when he hugged me, he said, you know, Stephen, thank you for giving me faith in love after hearing your 30 years. I, I just, I get very emotional. It was, it was just really beautiful that he, he said that. He didn't have to say that, but he was a character. He yeah. was funny yeah, as that hell. Was, that was something. He was really funny as hell. Yeah. Now, can, it's going to come on anyway, but can you just tell everyone about the ice cream cake? Oh, my God. So, <laughs> you know, where this, this is not an exaggeration. This is, this is. No, not at all. This is exactly what happens in this kitchen. Um, so I, I make an early dinner because we knew we were going to do this. And, uh, and then after I say, you know, what would you like to have for dessert? And, um, and, and I suggested because, because our nephew had a birthday uh, about a week ago here. And so we still have some ice cream cake left over. I said, how about, you know, we finish the ice cream cake? And he's like, okay, sounds good. And then he goes in the refrigerator back there and, and opens the refrigerator door. And he's just like looking like this. I'm, I'm sitting at the counter just watching. Like I, I'm thinking to myself, I wonder how long it will take him to realize an ice cream sundae, it's, uh, ice cream cake is not kept in the refrigerator. And he said nothing. But the freezer, but, but he opened and he's like, like looking, 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 about to say, I can't find it. And then, <laughs> then he's like, oh, freezer. I'm like, and he looks at me like, why didn't you tell me? I'm like, Steven, it's an ice cream cake. <laughs> what about ice cream cake do I need to remind you that is kept in the freezer? So, oh my and God. And that's the funniest part of me being in the kitchen. Yeah, like I, he I doesn't mean, even know where the ice cream cake goes. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you should have seen him just, Standing at the door, looking everywhere. Yeah, like, but you, you didn't know. tell me. You just no, didn't because let me wait. I, I'm fascinated. Looking at you, saying, I, I really do wonder how long is it going to take him to realize that an ice cream cake is in the It was quick. It was very quick. Yeah, so, and and a, a big minutes. news, big news too for me. I just finished the book. Is my book is completely edited. So now we go on to the next phase of. The book cover, the format, and getting it ready to be um, out in October. So I'll let everybody know about that. But I am really, really excited. The I, like I think I said on your show, the editor editor I found <clears throat> in California, uh, Seattle, Washington, she's fabulous. Samantha. She's yeah, fantastic. Fabulous. So she went really fast, and um, she did an amazing job editing the book. So I'm really, really excited about. So we're uh, silly. So. We're both silly. Why? Why am I silly? Jen, I Jen Kelly. I'm not here, Jen. silly. Yeah, Jen, I'm not wearing mine today. Jen, I'm sorry. Tell Lily. I know, Ooh. I know, but I have it. I, and I wore I, I actually took it with me to uh, Phoenix. And by the way, so let's talk about my Phoenix story. You know, what a shit show that was. You know, I was supposed to come back Thursday. I'm just with the duck. No, no. This, you know, I'm, I'm taking, I'm on business last week. I'm taking the red eye. Thursday night to get here for Friday. I have a radio show, a live radio show. So I got to be live at 1 p.m. Friday. Otherwise, the show, it's going to go live and I'm not there. And um, so I had him on standby just in case because my flight kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. And I was having a nervous breakdown waiting for this thing to take off. So I eventually took off at, after midnight. Phoenix time, which is after 3 a.m. here. So I made it the following morning and it was, you know, it was back to back to back, crazy. Yes. But, you know, kudos also to Dow and the team at Salt Dental in Phoenix because they hosted me incredibly, incredibly well. And, um, you know, I had a wonderful, wonderful time with them. So thank you guys. And nothing about the duck? What duck? See, you know what? It, you what know, it's, it's not like I'm even here in this relationship. What after 30 years. Oh, 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 my see, God. See, it's oh, like, I, I wish, I wish, might as well just be invisible. No, because, no, 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 no. It's because. Are you getting rid of me? I'm so Seriously, used, are you, you going to ask for no, a divorce? No, it's because the silly is so ingrained in me that I, I'm, 
now look at Sealy as the normal, you know? So of course I'm in Phoenix, I'm unpacking my suitcase, you know, it's just to carry on. And the first thing I see in my luggage is this little ducky that he just threw in my luggage. And I, I already knew, I'm not, I don't have to wonder what, what is this doing here? I just knew. Uh, Stephen put this little duck. It was in a my little luggage. love from us. Yes. Yeah. So when you were away, you knew the love was there. Yes. And yes. I put the little duck on the bed. He's getting rid of me, and I'm shelling out love. Oh just my saying. God, so please. nothing. No, see, I don't know. You know how I, when he goes away, I ask people to cook for me or have me over, and I'll do a reading and feed me. I may be looking for a new husband, a new boyfriend. So. By the way, about cooking, did you guys see what he made uh, when I was yes. away? Yes. You know, he made the pierogies. And yes, he got the pierogies. Pierogies need to be made by some Polish lady. So we can go get the pierogies. What, what, so what, like, I could have put a babushka on and just been one of those Polish ladies. Yeah. I, but that, pierogies are not that, easy. That would have been a hard one to, you know, to pass over people. But but yeah, but, but you know, he boiled them, he pan fried them. I did, and, and they, they came really out good. good. And the capusta yeah. too. So I didn't actually make them. But I did have but to you, make the but pierogies because they were frozen. Them. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They were so, frozen. And then I was all by myself. I did have the fire extinguisher ready just in case something happened. So just one of those things. But I, I was very, very, I was very proud of myself that I got to, to do that. Right. So it's, it's. Uh, Phil says Stephen is euphoric. You're back, Elix, so you could feed him. <laughs> uh, yeah, you could say that. Yeah, I like. Sure. He ate quite well today. So. Yeah, my pants are not even fitting because I lost so much weight. I need extra belts. Yeah, so. Michelle, Michelle thinks you did a great job. Thank you. Michelle, thank you. He I did. did. He I did. did. Yes. I was when he sent me the picture, I was really impressed. So so kudos to you for managing. Yes. So and I hope everybody is doing well on this Sunday night. And it was such a beautiful day here, right? It was it was a gorgeous fabulous day. fall day. Yes. And uh, I love the fall. Yes. So and Friday night we went to uh, is it quarterbacks? Yes, so we Did went to, it? yeah, quarter deck. Oh. <laughs> quarterback. That's a football term, Steven. Anyway, quarter deck. In is, Easton. I know, not Easton. Yeah, Hickman, yeah. Fallon. Are you, is there, is there actually My alcohol? My sippy poo is juice. Yeah. I swear it's juice. Um, it's, not, it's not wine. No, so this is an awesome uh, neighborhood restaurant in Falmouth, Massachusetts. And honestly, I declare, and this is, you know, this is a, this is, this could be, this could generate a lot of controversy because in Cape Cod, everyone claims to have the best lobster salad roll, but the one at quarter deck with the Portuguese bread, it's off the hook. I declare that to be the best lobster salad roll. And everyone's going to remember it even after this, if you're driving through Falmouth, oh, Stephen Elix said to go to this wonderful restaurant. It's, what is it called? A quarterback. But you know, when you type in quarterback, it will switch to quarter deck. So thank me for Hopefully that. Hopefully, it will switch, or or else you'll be going to another restaurant. You'll be going alleged, to Gillette. Allegedly calling call quarterback. <laughs> anyway, but this is we have such. You're making such a great thing. So tell everybody. Oh, so we're we're switching. Well, so unless, yes. So, unless you want to keep rapping, no, 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 I no, could no, rap no, all day. No. Just saying, I could so, rap a lot. So today we have a super super easy recipe this is you know i i got a lot of feedback that you guys wanted me to do something uh puerto you know that has a puerto rican flair to it and this is uh it's a pastry that we call pasteli pastelitos quesitos sorry no i'm confused because that's what he, you know quesitos is a, is a is well a, the broader term is pastelillo it's a pastelillo you no know, but it's called quesitos See. in puerto rico yes. we call them quesitos yeah. and it's it's simple it's such it's a simple recipe yeah. so if you ever want to do something that's going to look really really impressive and uh, and this could be done because it's like a danish pastry really so it could be done for breakfast it could be done for a snack it could be done for dessert but i promise you it's super simple and uh, so that's what we're going to do today you are going to learn how to make them and how to give it that puerto rican flair and this is perfect like if you've you're on a date and it may be having your boyfriend or girlfriend come over and you know it could be the night and you want to really impress them quesitos right quesitos because even if it doesn't go well at least your stomach will your tummy will feel good you have a quesito even if it's not you know the rest of the date's not going well right so 
Yeah, I can't imagine somebody on a date. Let me now make you a pastry. No, you know, hey, listen, casito. if if either a guy or a woman, two guys, two girls, it doesn't matter. If someone cooks, listen, if if I was dating again, right, and it's been a long time. Thirty if, years. Yes. If I was let I, me remind you, thirty years. You don't know. I mean I could have I when you were away, I could have dated someone. Yeah. Um, I but if I yeah, if I was dating and this guy had me over and he pulled out quesitos, I would be extremely impressed. Well, then again, I would be impressed with toast with butter on it because I don't know how to cook. But quesitos, the way he made them, I would be very, very, definitely very impressed. And I would think about possibly leaving my shoes under his bed. Yeah, just saying. And you know, to did you like all, that phrase? <laughs> to all my boricuas out there, eh, esta es mi receta. Así que no me juzguen. Si ustedes la hacen de una manera diferente, that's okay. I'm uh, making it. This is my own thing. I'm just saying to all my Puerto Rican friends that if they make it in a different way, don't judge me. This is my own way of making it. It's so. the elites quesitos. That's it. It's, yes. It's my my version. My version. Of and they're, they're actually they're they're one of my maybe almost like top three favorite pastries. In Puerto Rico, and it's something oh, yeah. that you can't yeah. get here. In Puerto right? Rico, so. is super. I, I call that you know. I went to the term pastelillos because we also we could use that same recipe, and instead of putting cheese, we could just do like a guava, or you could put any kind of jam, and uh, so in, in that we would call pastelillos. But quesitos uh, would always be considered <clears throat> a dessert, or no? You could, like you said, you could do it for breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's because it really is it, the reality. It's like a cheese danish it's you know it's i the recipe it's not that yeah. different from a cheese danish and Deb in, just said i know firsthand what a great cook you are elix because because deb was here that's right that's <laughs> right so you know and all that it's you know again the ingredients for this are super super easy so whenever we're ready we can tell people what they are yeah well we, well let's get going let's so. get going all right yeah come over with me so you, come on you come on to, uh, come on over Let's see if we can get a little closer here. So you tell me what you can see. So that's um, perfect. I yeah, think. perfect. I'm actually going to go here. I want to show people. So you know, all you need to have is puff pastry, and you can buy puff pastry anywhere uh, in the supermarket in the. Uh, frozen session. So this is one version of puff pastry. So whatever you find in your supermarket will be just as good. So we're going to deal with that see me? in a minute. I feel like a caricature way back here. Can you see me yeah, back there? I'm sure they can see you. So um, to do the filling, we are going to add one uh, whole uh, container of cream cheese, one block of cream cheese. So I'm just going to add that there. I don't know if you, if you have to move the phone to them. Um, I think, can you guys see? I don't know. Yeah, I asked them. I just did. So, so we are... Somebody answer. Can you see? Like, close enough? So to the cream cheese, it's, you know... I look like a peeping Tom. Look. <laughs> it should be soft and cream cheese, so I'm just... Um, I took it out a little bit ago, so I just wanted to make sure. That I can, so Col hi, Colleen. She can so, see. Yeah, beautiful. So I'm softening the cream cheese because to that, I am going to add. Happy birthday. Morgan. Morgan says you need to get closer. Hey, Morgan. Morgan. We don't, so, so you're in charge. We, we, we don't phone argue phone. with Morgan. So, so one uh, block of cream cheese, a half a cup of um powdered sugar so we are going to sweeten the cream cheese a little bit and again our goal is to mix it all together is this a little bit better okay, you're in charge of that i hope i think it looks I think it looks better, right? Yeah, you guys, you guys give us some feedback. So I'm just again, I'm I'm creaming the cream cheese and the sugar. Karen, Karen also, Morasco said she can see. So 
Can she? Really? She can see. Okay, here you go. But but um uh Morgan, thank you, honey. Thank you, Morgan. So she said that's better. Okay, thank you. Morgan is a Oh my god, and ha happy happy birthday or happy where am I? Anniversary. I just heard somebody in, in spirit say somebody who's watching has something. It's you know, when they do that, it's either today or really close, just a couple of days back or a couple of days forward. But I can't tell if it's an anniversary of death or uh, anniversary of wedding, birthday, but there's, there's, feels like an anniversary, but it could be birthday. So I don't know who this is, but somebody's already popping their head in just saying that they want to say happy birthday. All right, let me show people. So see how beautiful that already looks? So, you know, I cream the cream cheese and the powdered sugar. So to this, I am going to add a, about a, a tablespoon of vanilla. Now, you guys have heard me here before. Michelle, I love that. Happy anniversary. It's Michelle's anniversary last week. Happy anniversary, Michelle. Happy. Always, always, always good, high quality vanilla bean. It will make an enormous difference in your recipe, okay? So I don't, Enormous. I'm not a fan of the fake stuff. You know, they have people, you know, uh, some research does show that, you know, in the taste itself, the fake stuff works just as well, but I'm a fan of the real thing. So always get yourself good. And, and Deb and just I, said her mom's birthday is tomorrow. Oh. And, 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 and Deb, I was privileged to get to meet your mother um, with David. So I cannot believe it's a double validation. Could be triple, quadruple validations too. I love that. I met your mom too. I was very privileged. Yes, in, in, in the, um, at the event. The yeah. Oh, yes. Right, yes. So again, I'm making sure that all of that is well combined because this is going to be the filling inside the puff pastry. Now, are you going to post the ingredients too? Somewhere? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let you just know. Have it. But again, this is not rocket science. This is a very easy, simple recipe. Right now, all we've used is one uh, a container of cream cheese, one block of cream cheese, a half a cup of powdered sugar, a tablespoon of vanilla. Now, you could add, uh, add lemon abstract to it. I'm not crazy about that big of a bowl of a flaming lemon, uh, lemon flavor in the filling, but you could do that if you want to, it's up to you. I, pref I prefer lemon zest because the lemon zest will add that lemon flavor, but it will be in the background. So and who wants to be in the background, right? You want to be right up front, right? Well, you, like, so, so as soon as people walk in, you're right there. You, you see, I, I, I'm sure you, you do want to be right up front, but for this, because lemon is a bold flavor, I think that, and I would say about a half a lemon of um, will do. If you want more flavor, then you could do. So you're zesting it now? I am zesting and zesting, you know, it's just making sure that you just But are get, there other ways to zest or you have to use that contraption? No, this is, you have to get, you have to have a, something that will, uh, it's like a grater that will- Something that will zest. The, the yellow out of, so this is what it looks like so see there's the zest so this is gonna add a really beautiful lemon flavor but it's gonna be in the background it's not gonna be as bold as lemon abstract or lemon juice so this is it the filling is all done so now I am going to prepare the pastry the dough the puff pastry, that is. So the filling is all done. This is how simple it is, okay? Puff the magic dragon. So, right? yes. So you, he just completely ignores me. Yes, because I am honing on, You're what I, on what I need to do. So, again, puff pastry. Let me just get rid of this. Um, needs to be kept refrigerated. Um, I'm just unfolding. But you could actually make that too, right? Like uh, homemade? It's, honestly, making puff pastry is a complicated process. Can it be done? Absolutely, of course it can be done. What do you do with the... Um, of 
course it can be done, but it's so complicated that this is very exciting. Why not use something that is already done and the quality of the product is, you don't have to worry about the quality of the product. So this is one sheet of puff pastry. Some boxes actually include two sheets, um, but this is one sheet and this is plenty for Steven and I. So what we do is we're gonna cut the puff pastry in half. And then that other half, we're going to cut it again. In half. So this is going to make four beautiful pastries. I mean, the sizes will be slightly different, uh, you know, between each one. But this is what we do. Stephen, ask people if they can see, because I can't. You know, speaking of sizes, did you know that I went to school, um, Kramer School, with a kid that had, like, his feet was like so different that it was two size different. Like difference. Why are we doing that? I know, we just, I don't know what made no, me think of it, 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 but you never really could see it. Like if you saw his shoes, but where do you see somebody who's got like if their size is seven, the other foot's nine. How does that happen? It's kind of a little bit like a big foot. I think everyone is, um, I can see, we can see just oh, fine. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So that's, I just want to make sure you guys see what I'm doing. So here it is, you know, so we're going to fill each pastry at a time. And what we're going to do is just a hefty spoonful and we'll just put it in the center. How come you're not asking me to do anything? Uh, because I don't trust you to do that's anything. something. Um, and you're in charge of the camera. So, I mean, this, this, by the way, this cream cheese already tastes delicious as is. So, hold on, Steven. Well, we're, we're eating them. Yeah, there you go. Mm. Very good. Very rich, very lemony. And I only use zest. I didn't, I didn't add any lemon, Nothing any else. additional lemon juice. So now from here, it's up to you. You could do this, you know, um, in, in, in whatever way calls to you. I'm just going to just fold them over. You can become or get very creative, right, with these? Yes. Yes, you can. Again, this is how I'm going to make them. They're going to look just like the Cito's. In Puerto Puerto Rico. Rico. Exactly. So, but again, you could, you could do, you could fold them however you, way you want to. You can get very creative, but today we're just going to do them in a check very the simple way. What was that? You should check in with the Spaniards. Oh, uh, si hay algún I'm just asking anyone from Puerto Rico who may be watching. So by the way, I'm putting them in parchment paper so that we're gonna bake them in this um, tray with parchment paper. So now, here's what we're gonna do. There's one egg, right? So we are going to do a little egg wash. And, um, you know, one egg, I add a little water to this, so give me one second. Elix had me helping one day, and told me that to do that with the chicken. But like, to put my hands in, Oh my gosh. And I just said to him, I don't eat meat and I cannot, this poor thing. It became, it became a super dramatic <laughs> event for him. So we're just going to bathe them with a little egg wash. This is going to, you know, cause them to brown really beautifully. Like if you're in the sun. Exactly. This is like a sun lotion, sun kind of lotion. Um, and this is really egg, to be honest with you. How simple is this? 
It's simple. I mean, it's very simple. You I'm impressed this recipe. Your family, yeah. your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. You could impress a lot of people. I'm making this recipe live with you guys right now. And um, super, super simple. And I can actually smell it from here. And already, it's not even baked. It smells really good. The, the, the lemon, I can smell it. Looks. Yeah, so just in the event, because I just... What is, gonna, are you doing that? Uh, just so that, you know, there's, if they need to um, air. Um, so this is it. This is what it looks like. So I'm going to put them in the oven and we are going to bake them. I think it's about 15, 20 minutes until they're golden brown. And then we'll continue with the recipe to make them look really pretty. Okay. Real pretty. But that really was easy. That is even something that I could do. There's, yeah. there's no question I could do that. I probably couldn't find where those pastry sheets are in the market, but you know. I sent him to the market <laughs> not long ago to buy rice. And he, um, this is not a joke. He called me from the market to tell me that there was no rice at the store. They were out of rice. They were out of rice. <laughs> I'm like, Steven, there is no such thing as a market, you know, without rice. So ask someone, please, no, to so help you. No, there was a really nice woman that was standing in, in the aisle next to me, and I was talking to Elix. She heard me. I'm like, I'm telling you there's no rice. And all of a sudden, I hear, honey, and I look over, and she was like, it's rice. She said, come on, honey. So she actually brought me, like I was four years old, I almost had to, like, hold her carriage. And she brought me just a couple of aisles over. I swear I went through every single aisle and I was looking for like the, the um, what is it called? Like the foreign food? What is it? It's a, is it yeah, foreign? They, they, yeah, it's like the international the section. International but, section. I was looking all over for rice. I could not find it at yeah. all. Can you imagine? He literally called me to say, there's no rice. They don't have rice. <laughs> I'm like, Oh my God, Steven, please, nice. I almost, I was tempted to say, can you just get somebody and put them on the phone with me? I didn't need that. I had my friend yeah, who, so. who brought me, so, um, which yeah. I got oh, oh, Steven is right. Exactly. exactly. I got I to gotta be honest though. Do you know how often that happens? Like when I'm in a situation like the market that people just, it's, it's like they just sense it. It's always women and just come up to me and say, you know, what are you, what are you looking for? They don't even work there. What are you looking for? And then they just bring me to wherever I need to go. It's, it's like an automatic robot yes. that just yes. helps me go right, right there. So yeah. at the at the um, airport too, when I went to meet you in Florida, I I, oh. I met my good friend and uh, on the plane, and he thankfully brought me because that plane that Orlando was it Orlando or Tampa? Orlando Orlando um, yeah. that is not an easy. Um, Airport. He he was supposed to go there by himself, and I was gonna call an Uber for him. But after, because I got there early before him, I'm like, there's no way he will never ever make it to the Uber pickup. So I said, I have to go get him. So I did. I went to get him, and even even me getting him, he needed somebody <laughs> to bring him from the plane to the um, um, to the. Uh, uh, what, you know, departure. Transportation. Yeah, transportation. Ground so. transportation. A woman or a guy that works with Elix were like, here comes Steven. Who, who's that guy with him? Yeah. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. <laughs> See, yeah. Like, so. <laughs> sitting on the plane, can you take me to ground transportation? And he wasn't going yeah. there. <laughs> so, so just while the pastry is cooking, we're going to dance. It really cooks very quickly. It should be 15 minutes, no more. Um, just to recap, one, you know, block of cream cheese. You're all business. Um, one, half a cup of uh, powdered sugar, one tablespoon of good vanilla extract, and the zest. I used, um, actually, this was a small lemon, so I used the whole lemon. Uh, so if it's a larger lemon, I would use a half a lemon. But, uh, but again, use as much lemon as you or as little lemon as you want. If you don't want lemon at all, you don't have to use any lemon. I just think lemon adds a little added flavor. And by the way, I don't know that a lot of people 
in Puerto Rico at the lemon zest. So again, that's my that's why I was going to ask you that my own version of, of of what it is. Yeah, um, but I love that you. That's what you do. Is that you put your yeah. spin on yeah. these creations, and it's always uh, amazing. Like tonight for, for for dinner, he made um, homemade pasta. Well, it, it was so so good. It's a simple dish, and. Uh, you know, and then we waited for him to find the ice cream cake in the refrigerator. <laughs> so, anyways, so that's did, it. did you mention I passed the bar on the first time? Yeah, we have. So I'm not we, a have dummy. To, we have to make sure that we do that. But listen, while did we, you show while we what? Work, to remind people that you are smart. Yes, I am. Because if they go by these stories, they'll be left with <laughs> just a lot of questions. Oh, of course, they'll be like Elix. Thank, thank you. God bless you mm -hmm. for taking care of him. So, you know, we do have a few minutes. We do. We do. We want to just um, talk to It's all about me. World. Yes. It's all about me. Let's let's tune in. One thing that I was going to, isn't this so cool, though, that we get you get to, like, um, see what's going on food-wise, and then you get to do some readings. Um, you know, Croak said always an adventure with me. That's for damn sure. Croak, so, man. you know what? Listen, before I say anything about spirit, um, Susan, I can't find her comment now. Um, she just said, always an adventure. So let me just tell you something that Susan will probably respond to, um, talking about an adventure. I've known Susan and I have been best friends for forever, from, from high school. And Paul, who I talk about a lot, is like the third best friend, right? The three of us. The, the other have, girl friend. <laughs> we've been best friends since high school, right? Paul and I met freshman year, and then I met Susan through Paul, and Susan and Paul have known each other for a long time. So we went to, decided to go to Florida one year, and to, to Disney, to Orlando, and back, God, I, I, 90s, there was, this play, there was this thing called Pleasure Island, which is no longer around. And there was this um, dance floor that rotated. So Susan and I were on this dance floor for, uh, uh, you know, Susan's listening, so, so maybe, maybe she'll chime in. I swear, maybe two hours. It, it was so cool. Like, they, they were playing this like great dance music and the floor is, is moving, it's spinning, right? And Paul is not a dancer, so he just sat there. So finally we got to get ready to leave and we get into the rental car and uh, Paul said, do you want to drive? And I said, I'll drive. So we're driving and then I realize that I'm going the wrong way on the highway. So I kept going and going. What is with Florida in some of those highways? There's no exits. I could have like gone to, to Mars and back before I got an exit. I keep going and going and going. And then finally, I just decided, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm just gonna cut across. So I did, I cut across without realizing where I was in Florida. And I got halfway through and then the rent a car, mind you, with me, Paul and Susan in it, stops. It's not moving any further. Um, uh, exactly, Crooks. We had so much fun dancing. The rental car starts sinking in a swamp. The whole rental car just starts sinking. So Susan is in the back seat now she, from all the dancing. She's knocked out. She's sleeping. And Paul's like, oh my God, Stephen, do we get stuck? I'm like, uh, I think so. So I open the, the, the car door. Um, Hi, Mira, June's here. Hey. Hi, June. We just talked about you. That we miss you. We haven't. We ha I haven't heard from you. Um, but getting back to the story, so I opened the car door and I put my foot in. The first foot in. And I'm like, oh my god! I pull my foot up. I don't have a sneaker anymore. The like the swamp was so bad that it sucked my sneaker, and I just had like socks on. So I had to dig for the sneaker. We got out. We tried to to, to get out of there. Susan wakes up in the back seat and says, "What the hell is going on?" So we we sort of. We left Susan there for a while, so she didn't have to get dirty. But I think eventually Susan came out. So we go out. This really nice guy stops. He's got this um, truck, and he decides to try to help us. He ties his truck to the rent -a car and the rent -a car is so stuck that even with this enormous truck, it ain't going anywhere. Like This rent -a car is not coming out of the swamp. So he's like, guys, I'm sorry, I tried. So he takes off, and then a couple of minutes later, a tow truck comes with the spinning lights, and he is not nice to us, like, at all. First of all, like, he knows probably we're not here, you know, from Florida, and he gets us out, and to make a long story short, he finally pulls the car out, and then says he's calling the cops, and we're, we're gonna be arrested, that's what he's telling us. He, he's and not nice, hold on. He's not nice, maybe because he, re he knows that what you did was illegal, like you're not supposed to be going. I was so 
young and naive. I didn't know. And so finally he gets us out. He pulls the car out, says he's going to call the cops. And if, talking, this is a nice lead into spirit, right? Talk about my father, my grandma Rose, taking care of us and I'm sure Susan and Paul's family too in spirit. He comes back to us and I, 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 I I don't think I can swear on YouTube, but what he said was, uh, I can't get in touch. I can't get through to the cops and says F you to, to us and gets in the, the, the truck and just takes off. So we thankfully didn't get um, cops involved. But the funniest part about the story is once we got back in the car, every like every little bump sounded like there was like tons of dishes breaking in the, the trunk and in the engine. I don't know. <laughs> what we did to the car, but it made some bad noises. And the next morning, this is how m mature I am. The next morning, we got up and Paul said, we could have bring this car to the car wash because there's mud everywhere. And Paul and Susan did. Where did I go? To the pool. <laughs> I needed a tan. <laughs> Susan remembers no, that. Nothing has changed, by the way. Hold on. Let me just move this a little. Nothing has changed. This is... This is exactly the same thing that you would do today. So, <laughs> yes. And I, I have, I just recently posted that picture on Facebook or Instagram or social media. I, I came across that, that old photo album and I actually, I found it and decided um, I'm going to um, post it. So I did. So, which is really cool. So, um, hey, Diana, um, Michelle, I am. That's, say, that's why he should be on his knees you know, just saying, dear God, thank you. Thank you for bringing me, Stephen. Be what so, did she, Michelle say? Um, that you're what? Michelle. Who, who said, why should I be thanking you? Uh, because thanking I'm a riot. Oh. Yeah, because I, you know, I am, I'm fun. Yeah, right? Yeah, so. Um, but listen, anyway, getting to spirit, because we have some time. That's why I love this. We can connect, we can pull in some cooking, we can pull in some spirit. So um, I know I've said this before, but it seems like a lot of people either have missed this or people don't understand the significance of this. If you are trying to contact or get signs from your loved ones, I mean, listen, I, I do readings pretty much daily, right? And you know, I teach courses and I'm teaching two courses right now. If you want to, and if it's something that you don't know where to go, you don't know where to start, like you, you know, so many of so many people when I do group readings or big venue readings, um, at the end of it will come up to me, Stephen, how do you how do you see signs? I never see signs. My sister does, my brother does. Like and it's always the person saying, I don't I can't see signs. And that's what we want, right? We want to know that our loved ones are around us all the time. So I did a blog one of my blogs which i'm so late with september because it's 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 out it's done but it's not out um i called it a sign a sign it is so simple and so easy to be able to start that first sign just pick a loved one say it's your mom who's in spirit that you miss a lot just pick something Preferably, if it's something that you remember she loved or was connected to, like uh, um, say hearts. Say say your mom just you know um, had something like say maybe she always wore like a, a, um, a necklace with a pendant that was heart shaped, and she just loved the heart. Just then you know it's really simple. Just take a couple of deep breaths in, close your eyes. You know when you're uninterrupted, and just envision that in your third eye. And sometimes, you know, some people are very good with the third eye. Some people are not. Even if you're not, just just in your brain, just 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 imagine a room. And the room, it's a small room. It has two doors on each side. You come in one door. Your mom comes in the other door. You, you, you meet each other. You hug. I mean, right there, who doesn't want to do that, right? And you're just with them because that pretty much happens every day. We just don't know it, right? In this particular case, your mom's here all the time. Um, but you hug her and you just say, Ma. I have something that I'm assigning. I'm assigning a sign that's going to be the sign between the two of you, the two of us rather, a um, heart. So in any shape, way, a heart is going to be our sign. And you sort of just like, you know, say it three times, like just over and over again, say, my, a heart, a heart. It's going to be a heart connection. That's our sign, a heart, a heart. You know, sometimes I love doing things which I think is very helpful is that maybe um, before you start the the whole like 
exercise, get like just like a piece of paper or a notebook and actually in this particular case, draw a hot, like just big on the paper, draw a hot and maybe just take that, that paper and just hold it as you're doing it because it's just gonna, you know, this is, this is all about adjusting your energy to be the, in the frequency of where spirit is, right? They are very close to us, but they're, they're in a different frequency. So anything that you can do that, um, you know, when I, I, I'm teaching my class, um, is that your five senses need to be strong to get your sixth sense to be the strongest. So doing something like writing a heart and then holding it, you're using one of your senses, right? As you're doing this exercise, you're holding on to something. So you're not only, you know, because, you, you know, if your eyes are closed, you're not using your vision, you're hearing, you can be smelling, but, but mostly you're holding because you know you're holding it, right? You're holding the heart. And I guarantee you that, in, and I would just say one last thing, when you're done with it, also... I would just say whatever you were saying in your third mind out loud, because what you want to do is you want to get that vibration out and say it vocally. Um, and I guarantee you that after doing that, you're going to see hearts, but you've got to be open to how the hearts come. So the hearts can come in so many ways. They can come in that you're on the beach and there's a rock that's shaped in a heart. Um, it can come in that you put the TV on and it's the first thing right as the TV pops on a commercials ending and it's like American Heart Association and all you see is the heart. So, you know, it's, it's your mom. Any version of a heart is, is what she's going to be bringing because, um, you know, spirit also has to adjust. We have to adjust to be able to see the signs. They also have to adjust with energy. That's why, you know, if you're say in your house and you hear something fall, like say a pitcher falls, that you look like, how did that fall? That's most likely your loved ones. They don't know, like they're using, it's almost like, it's almost like a baby walking. They're using their energy, but they don't know how much to use. So a lot of times they may push, push a little too far. And then all of a sudden that actually pushes and takes the frame off and the picture drops. So, you know, it's your loved one, which is great, but not great if it breaks. Right. Um, but that's what this is all about. That they're, they're learning as much as we're learning, but if we get together and I say about assigning a sign, because if you get, say the next, I don't know, the third day after you do this, right. You see something like you're, you know, you're walking into a store or a market. And as soon as you walk in, someone is moving a, a design or something and it's heart shaped or someone, you know, is walking with a frame and it's heart shaped right in front of you. So you, you look at that and you thank your mom. Oh my God, Ma, thank you. I just saw the heart and I'm telling you, I can't explain it, but that opens the door further. What it does is it starts re rewiring your brain to be able to access and find those signs. That's really all it is. It's, it's with, with mediums and psychics, mostly mediums, because, you know, we're, um, as a medium, you're, you're connecting with your loved one in spirit, um, to be able to do that, you just, you just have to, you have to rewire yourself to get these signs and getting the signs is not a difficult thing. Well, at all. Steven, so when you talk about, you know, a spirit moving a frame and they break it, you know, so what would you tell people that are afraid? They, they get afraid when something like that happens, you know, because I, I was, you know, like I was with Dow this week, this past week, and that's one of the things that she said that she, she's afraid yeah. of some of the signs. So what would you tell people? Well, I think exactly pretty much what I already said <clears> is that, <throat> I would explain it, Elix, and I would also just the, the, the biggest thing with spirit is that they, everyone comes from 100 percent of love. You, you never should be afraid of it. And, and if you are someone who's maybe very empathic and picks up energy, you know, I, I tell you know, the, the, my, my students that are in my course and, and, you know, even in readings, if I find someone that's very, very empathic or very, very connected to spirit, it's just every morning before you wake up, just before you get out of bed, just envision a white light coming down from the sky and it just comes right down and right when it gets to your head, it just sort of, it's almost like a tent over you or a force field. It just goes right, it's like a, it's someone drops cloth right over you. That's it. And if you, with your intention, you say this white light is coming down to protect me and say something like only allowing white light, high energy positivity in and nothing else. That's good. That, that helps so much. And, and it just, it's also reassuring what Elix just asked. It's reassuring to like know that if you are getting something that falls, you know that, oh my God, it's going to be dad or grandma or mom 
somebody who's just using too much energy. They're 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 trying to because you know again it's they're adjusting there. They're adjusting all the time, but they're they're different because it's all energy. They don't have the physical body, but they're adjusting and they just all they want is to give us signs. So but if you do that, that, yeah, I was gonna say that the more that you acknowledge the signs and that you thank spirit for the signs, the more. Yeah, because I mean, yes, we, we get signs nonstop, oh, nonstop, always. Yeah. And but, but that's because we've adjusted, we, we've rewired our brains. Like just last time or two times ago, we were in New York and we were walking. We walk a lot oh in New God, York, yes. and as we're walking, um, Elix and I started talking about one of our dogs, that uh, monkey. He's Memphis, but He's we call like it a monkey. Baby. And he was very attached to Elix, and he 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 passed away in 2020. And we were just talking about him, and Elix was saying, my, my monito, because that's monkey in Spanish, and he would call him monito, mono, monkey. And we just were talking about it, and, and this, is, this could flash by somebody so quickly. Yeah. As we're walking down this street, there's a woman coming towards us with her like six-year-old boy, yeah. and he's running ahead of her. And as he's just almost at us, and she's not that far, she was like, hey, hey, monkey, monkey, don't go so fast. And Elix and I looked at each other and knew absolutely like that's Memphis giving a message. And that happens all the time. In B Town. In B Town, um, uh, what was the uh, the drag queen that we saw? She not only used monkey, oh she said monito. Yeah. She she used all the names that we would call Yeah, them. I mean it was just it, it was it it couldn't be planned better yeah. because we were standing in line and talking about the dogs and yes. talking about monkey. So we get there and out of nowhere drag queen in her show just Jamie Brown. yeah she brings up uh mono mono, mono monito and he looks and I looked at each other like oh my god so yeah. dogs humans everyone yeah. comes through so it was, it was incredible assigning incredible. a sign that is such a fantastic way to get somebody to connect with a particular sign and it's and it's nice for you too because then you're aware it's not like you're just looking for anything in, in everything and one last thing too if you do Say using this example, you use the heart and say you get this really amazing sign from your mom and you're thanking her and you love it, right? Um, keep open for the next sign. I tell people all the time that generally um, signs from spirit are like an earthquake. You have the big earthquake and then you have tremors and everybody gets so excited, they close down and then there's another heart like right after it, which is another huge sign a really cool sign but because you're so excited about the first sign and you're in your head and you know, thank you mom which is beautiful but then you forget and don't see the second sign or possibly third sign or fourth sign so it's just it's one of those things that always always when you see a sign be sort of you know um observing to <laughs> see if there's going to be something else because that's what happens to spirit all the time they they know you're in that frequency and if you think about it, as I just mentioned, we're in two different frequencies. So if you can get in that frequency and see that sign, which means you're tied to them, and they're like, oh my God, this is the time. So you may also have a grandmother who, who sends a sign or a grandfather or a dog or a cat or whatever. So um, it's kind of cool, right? So um, I always remember your geese story. Yeah, yeah, Phyllis. I, I just actually looked at that video more recently that I, I, I was just doing setting intention about seeing something. And you know, Phil, it's it's funny you say that because I that just happened, I shared that with Elix just last, maybe not even a week ago, I shared that. Um, Elix, I was putting the camera back there. Oh, oh okay, okay, um, okay, yeah. So I went to meditate in the woods behind our house, the conservation land, and I was thinking when I meditate, I'm going to set my intention and um, use energy and use feeling to bring something in nature to me. I did not even get there. I was, you, it's, what happens is you rewire your brain, you get so good at it that I didn't even need to get to sit to meditate. I'm walking and I haven't posted the picture yet, but I'm walking, I look to the right and there's this giant coyote just staring at me. He, I, I, he looked at me, he, then he really looked at me and then he took off and, and but I got a picture because I had my camera ready and then I went to um, uh, meditate and I did my intention and feeling and energy. And as I was doing my walk after the meditation, I saw a hawk that was above me and he was making this, this noise. Um, you know, every, like every 10 seconds I was telling Elix. So I'm using 
my intention, my, my, my feeling, my frequency to pull him closer to me, right? Which is absolutely possible that any one of you can do. And he is circling closer. He got like as close as I was loving it. And then like, it looked like the wind sort of took him and he went away. And I thought, you know, um, that's not bad. I wanted him closer. I, uh, um, and I could feel every fiber in me that was pulling his energy towards me. And I just kept walking thinking, well, that was close. And no sooner did I say that, I hear from, I look to the right and I hear, it was like the wings were on top of me. It was another hawk that came flying out. Wait till I post the pictures on um, Instagram. It almost flew over my head. And I, I grabbed my phone and I snapped a picture and I got a really amazing picture. But it wasn't actually even the hawk I was seeing in the sky, it was a different one. So it's pretty amazing. We're all energy and we can pull energy, using our energy, pull anything we want. It's the, the manifesting, right? And that, can, that works in every area. Yeah, every it, area. It, it is. Yeah. And, and you know, I told Elix about this, that my, I think it's next class, the advanced class or the fifth one, I can't remember. Um, uh, Phil, Phyllis is, is in the class. Wait to you see what we're gonna go over. Um, I haven't, like, no one even knows this, what, what's part of the materials, and I didn't want to post it until everyone in the class gets to see it first, but it's just, um, I focus on what needs to happen before you manifest, um, which is really, really cool. And, um, um, and if, if you're not in this class, don't worry, we're going to do that in the radio show. Yes. So, um, yes. And, I, and, and then you'll learn more, and then you'll want to be in his class next time. Yes. But listen, this is ready. It's, oh my God, I, I didn't even do any readings. I haven't shut up, so. But let's go, let's go here because you, you need to see this. So look at how beautiful this looks. Oops, sorry. Did I screw that up? Yes. Right. Because, because you cannot not touch things. His hands never stop, just saying. When, when we're in the kitchen, this is my domain. So, so look at how beautiful they came out. They so, smell heavenly. Yeah. Now, some people make them smaller. I'm like, why? Why would I want anything smaller than this? So, so they're out of the oven and just as they're nice and hot, this is what we're gonna do. We are going to glaze them with, this is a beautiful trick. This is just corn syrup. So you don't have to make your own syrup. You get this one, and this is what you use. And that's, um, can you put down? Yes. So we're just gonna glaze them. So we're gonna make them look really nice and shiny. Look how beautiful that is. Do they look beautiful? Like, already, a, like, a, like a pretty penny. Yes. And, you know, we're gonna make sure that they're fully cover in the syrup. I mean, this looks already like to die for. They, they, I'm telling you, this whole kitchen smells in heavenly. incredible. Yes, heavenly. Make sure also, if you're watching, you subscribe to the channel. So make sure you get uh, notifications when we keep doing these things and if we throw well, something gonna every, in it's going to be every sunday right if we throw something else oh, in oh, okay, to get it, notifications it, also yes, yes. so and then yeah, michelle it does it's like michelle says i want one michelle so do i <laughs> to make them pretty you just want to do this little you know what the thing is we gaze we make everything pretty this is right. like this is like uh, the edible glitter. So look at how gorgeous this look. And Steven, tell me that these do not look like the ones you get in Puerto Rico. They look exactly like the ones. They are pretty amazing. Well, that's they look amazing. So. This is what they look like. Look how gorgeous. Oh my God, that smell is I mean, crazy. Seriously? And this was easy to make. It was not difficult to make. It was not difficult at all. Like, will you guys make them? And 
And um, DC, look at the pop sleeping adorable. I love it, DC. Yes, I can't believe you can see them. All right, so we can move the camera back so we can settle. Well, but DC mentioned the dogs. There they are, little Ricky and Django. Oh, they're here. They're always, always part of this. So, okay. So look at look at how beautiful this looks. I can't believe this guy. There. Yeah, look how beautiful this looks. It, I, like, Seriously, this smell, I wish all of you guys could just, even croaks, they look yummy. I wish you guys could just pop your heads right through and, and take a bite of them. And we have to take a bite, because I say to Elix, I, I, I find the cooking sh the cooking channels, like we watch Create oh a lot, my God. so soothing when I'm watching people cook and whatnot. But what kills me is when, like, Martha Stewart makes the stuff, and then she doesn't eat it. Like, that's why I love Lydia. If you ever watched Lydia's... Um, um, Lydia Basta Vintage or something yeah, like that. Everything. Yeah, I mean, what's the point? Isn't it like seeing, like, like watching someone taste it? And I don't know. That's kind of uh, what I think anyway. So, But if you guys were here, we would give you all a piece. Look at, he's, he's, he's working. So, um, and look at, look at yeah, how exactly. beautiful. Michelle said you have to eat it. Yeah, look at how beautiful. Oh, look at, this is what it looks like. I mean, this is a half, but I'm sure you can. And I'm hey, telling you. Hey, hey. Cheers. Cheers. Oh my God, look at this inside. This is crazy. Mm. Be careful. They're hot. Oh. Oh my God. They're really hot. But wow. they're so delicious. Oh my God. You, you can make this at home. This could be a nice treat. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. These are unbelievable. Yeah. And taste like exactly like we get in the bakeries in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. only they're hot. Mm -hmm. Usually, you know, if you're lucky, you may get them hot, but normally you don't. But these are um, delicious. Wow. Yeah. This, I just look at all of this inside. Amazing. You know, I want to, Colleen, you should. And if you guys do make them, you you gotta send us um, pictures of it. Yes. You can just use my email, Stephen the Medium at gmail.com. So then we can actually also post it. But that's pretty wow. Mm -hmm. These are uh, amazing. These are so, so good. I just I'm shocked at how easy it is. Mm -hmm. You know? Super easy. Um seriously. So amazingly fresh. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what else to say. Look, they're pretty amazing. So I hope you guys learned something new. These are super easy. All you need is puff pastry, which you can get at any uh, supermarket. And um, a block of cream cheese, one package of cream cheese, half a cup of powdered sugar, one tablespoon of Good. What temp? Extra. Um, Michelle wants to know what temperature. 350 for 15 minutes or until they are golden brown. So just watch until they're golden brown at 350. Uh, I used a uh, small lemon and I used the, the zest of the whole lemon. I didn't add any lemon juice, any lemon extract. Can you taste the lemon in the background? Uh, amazing. Yeah. And um, bake them for 15 minutes or so, 350. And after they come out, when they're nice and hot, um, glaze them with corn syrup and uh, put some sprinkle. I Beautiful love it. Sprinkle, you know. I love it. And that's it. That's it. How simple is that? How easy is that? So, and yeah. you know, and, and we're we're figuring this out, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I talked a lot about spirit. So next Sunday, I will definitely do readings. Yes. Um, so that we can, I can make sure I do them and and, and check in, but. I think this was this has been amazing. So you know, look. Oh my god! Again, like like Dina Martin says, Pally's, you have your sippy poos. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for joining us. I hope you had an amazing time. And are we ready to um, close the show? Oh, hold on one second. We we will be ready to close the show. Hold on one second. But I hope you guys really enjoyed this and. I know, you know, Elix doesn't um, 
do, uh, Colleen says, do you defrost the puff pastry? Uh, you Yes. So the puff pastry. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Um, um, you, can, you can look up what I'll talk. So the puff pastry, yes. You know, I keep it frozen. And today, just before I was... Uh, Sorry. I was, I was going to blooper. I, I was going to make them. I took them out, defrost them, then put them back into the uh, refrigerator to keep them cold. So, yes. So that they are pliable. They're, you know, they're workable. So pliable workable yes. yes 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 and if you have Flexible. any questions you can always reach out uh via coach elix or steven the medium and we'll get you the answers june so great to see you but you know we're not it's we're not, not done it's, it's not over how can we come in like amazing you're walking down along the street or you're at a party or else you are alone and then you're suddenly dead. You're looking at someone nice. You suddenly realize that this could be the start of something big. You're lunching at 21 and watching your diet. Declining a Charlotte Russe, accepting a fig. When out of the clear blue sky, it's suddenly guy and guy. And this could be the start of, of something, something big. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. We had the greatest time. And until next Sunday, we'll be back, right? We'll be back. See you, everyone.